Well, hey guys, I'm chugging along here on a decaf coffee. It's the end of the day. And for some reason, I really want a caffeinated coffee, not for the energy kick of the caffeine, but there is a subtle taste difference. It's not subtle, it's obvious, between caffeinated and decaffeinated coffee. And I'm really looking for that difference right now. <laughs> Anyways, I am making do with that. Today, I am gonna tell you guys the rundown on a ton of sunscreens that I have finished up this past winter. I say winter in air quotes because it really didn't get cold here in Houston. I mean, it never gets cold, but we do have a chill each winter season and that didn't seem to happen like it typically does. And that being said, I did wear mostly long, only long sleeves and long pants this past several months. And so I don't have a ton of body sunscreen in here, but anyways, let's go through. All right, first up is a sunscreen by Clear that, I gotta give a shout out to this, you guys. I was so impressed with this. I did actually end up using this particular one on my uh, body, but also my face. It's their Daily Face and Body Broad Spectrum SPF 40 sunscreen. This brand is cruelty free, but this particular sunscreen is mineral only and it just has zinc oxide in it. So in other words, if you're looking for a, a sunscreen that is cruelty free and reef friendly, this would be a great choice. It's water resistant up to 40 minutes. This does not sting or burn whatsoever. Because it's a zinc sunscreen, you wanna know about the cast. Zinc sunscreens tend to leave a cast. And so if you have a darker skin type, that's something that you're gonna to wanna to shy away from most likely or try and camouflage. The cast on this is not too bad. On my skin, you can just see a kind of white washing. So if you have a darker skin type, you're definitely gonna see it. It's really comfortable, really easy around the eyes, water resistant, it's great for working out, it's great for everyday use. The vehicle itself is, <clears throat> uh is oil free so it doesn't feel greasy or heavy it's a tiny bit shiny but almost in that kind of luminous glow appearance if you have more oily skin though that may just be tipping it over the edge for you and you might not like that additional glow um so it's kind of going to vary skin type to skin type but i have loved this it does not pill or ball which is huge because a lot of the water resistant mineral sunscreens they definitely can ball up or the zinc can kind of clump together. It doesn't run into your eyes either. It's comfortable to wear around the eyes, but like when you're working out and sweating, it doesn't run into your eyes. The nice thing about this is that many zinc sunscreens are incredibly drying. However, this vehicle is very moisturizing. So I think you'll find that it functions as a nice moisturizer with good sunscreen in it. So give it a try um, and let me know what you guys think. If you hate it on your face, you can still use it on your body, it works well. It's not sticky, which I love. Nothing worse than a sticky, icky sunscreen on your body. Um, speaking of body sunscreens, I mean, this one should come as no surprise to you, but I, I strongly recommend it. It's the Skin Aqua SPF 50 UV Moisture, Super Moisture Gel. I get this on Yes Style. Um, it's a Japanese sunscreen. This is a great one for not only the face, but for the body for working out. It's water and sweat resistant. It has um, wonderful filters in it for a really broad spectrum UVA, UVB protection. It has Uvenol T150, Uvenol A+, Tinisorb, and Octinoxate. And it's a gel vehicle, so it does not feel greasy at all. This is great for hair bearing areas, like in the face, around the beard area for men. And it uh, is wonderful if you've got oily skin because it's that gel vehicle. Gel vehicles tend to be a little bit more drying and kind of on the matte side. That being said, I don't find this sunscreen is drying whatsoever. They've done a nice job balancing out the gel aesthetic with moisturizing ingredients as well. This does have alcohol in it, which is a feature of many gel sunscreens. The alcohol is added to the vehicle to help stabilize the filters, so it's not a bad thing. It can be more on the drying or irritating side. So if you have really sensitive skin, you may not care for this. It may not work for you. I have not had any issue with it, however. It doesn't pill, it doesn't ball up, it stays in place, doesn't run into your eyes, doesn't sting around the eyes, great for working out, uh, great for if you're getting really sweaty. If you live in a hot, humid climate, this is a great choice for a uh, face and body sunscreen. If you have a lot of facial or body hair and you don't like the way that sunscreen builds up on the body hair shafts, try this. It's really good and 
I think you'll like it a lot. All right, another sunscreen by Clear that I finished up and I love, but it was a bit of a miss for me, is the uh, Daily Facial Sunscreen SPF 40, the tinted one. The reason it was a bit of a miss for me is that it's a little too dark for me. So I ended up using this actually kind of sparingly over um, the, um, over their zinc non-tinted sunscreen just to kind of camouflage the white cast but it definitely left a a noticeable like dark line on the side of my face if I didn't blend it out too well so this is a little too dark for me is what I'm getting at but otherwise it's fantastic if you have a darker skin type give this a try I really think you're gonna like it it's zinc and titanium dioxide so it's a physical sunscreen. Really wonderful if you have sensitive skin. The other nice thing about this too is because it's tinted, it's got iron oxides in it. So this is gonna give you some good protection against visible light. The vehicle is moisturizing, but dries with a matte finish. So it kind of gives that nice powdery blur effect that a lot of people with really oily skin appreciate. This is very similar, in my opinion, to the Coats tinted sunscreens that I recommend to you guys. And uh, it's also similar to a Ben's tinted sunscreen. This does not pill or ball either, you guys. A sunscreen that in the long run ended up being a miss for me was the Urban Skin RX Complexion Protection Moisturizer SPF 30. This is a chemical sunscreen. There's no cast to it. When you first put it on the skin, it looks amazing. It has squalane in it, and so it ends up giving the, the emollient effect of squalane ends up giving the skin a really nice glow. And this is kind of marketed towards people with darker skin types. And so they're marketing it to that demographic who's looking for a sunscreen that's not going to leave a cast. The downside of this particular sunscreen, though, is that it pills like crazy. Not at first, not when you first put it on, but throughout the day. You guys know I don't use other skincare products in the morning. I just put the sunscreen on. So the fact that this pills on bare skin if you guys are trying to layer with makeup and whatnot, I think it's gonna cause issue for you guys. The other thing that I don't care for about this is the price point. I ended up going through this little pump very quickly and it is on the more expensive side. So if you have a darker skin type, you might be lured to this brand because of kind of how it's marketed towards you. And you know, they're getting you on the fact that there's no cast, but a better sunscreen for protecting your skin and for meeting what your skin needs is actually gonna be the clear tinted sunscreen that I recommended because it protects you against those pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light that tend to affect darker skin types more so. As opposed to this, there's nothing in this that's gonna protect you from those wavelengths. And this tinted one doesn't leave a cast behind. It blends into the skin really nicely. There's no white cast with this. So it's mineral, but no white cast because of that tint. And that tint offers you some additional protection against pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. But it's a little too dark for me. Now, another product that I love and finished up pretty quickly because it is a small tube is the MD Solar Science MD Cream Mineral Beauty Balm. This is a tinted SPF 50 like BB cream, but it functions as a tinted sunscreen. It is a little, it's not as dark as the clear one, but it has a similar feel and finish. It is matte, but it's not super drying. I ended up using this like I did the clear tinted one to kind of camouflage uh, mineral sunscreens that will leave a white cast. And as opposed to the clear one, for me, I found that this particular one, I was able to blend in more easily without having like noticeable uh, dark line on the side of my face or people being like, why is your, why, are you wearing sunless tanner? Uh, so yeah, this one ended up working out better for me just as far as a skin tone. But MD Solar Science makes some fantastic sunscreens and they're really good if you have a darker skin type as well. They are really good in terms of not leaving that cast but protecting you in a way that, that your skin really needs. So I strongly recommend that brand overall and the BB cream was great. Doesn't pill, doesn't ball up. And if you have really sensitive skin, that's a good one. It, mineral sunscreens, as a side note, are good if you have, have, uh, have sensitive skin. Another miss for me, unfortunately, was this, okay, I have to, I wrote the name down because it's kind of long. I got this on Yes Style. What the heck was it called? Um, Roto Mentholatum SPF 50 Megumi Anti-UV Cream. Yeah, <clears throat> so I got this on Yes Style uh, a while ago, and I didn't really talk about it on YouTube because when I was trying it out, I was like, this is a complete mess. But here you go. It is a 
combination sunscreen. It has zinc in it, and then it has some chemical filters for uh, additional protection. It has Octinox A, which will give you UVB protection, and it has Uvenol A+, which is a great filter for hitting those UVA aging rays. So I like that about it. It's got coenzyme Q10 in it, an antioxidant that theoretically can help diminish the effects of ultraviolet radiation on the skin, free radical damage. But remember guys, in sunscreens, antioxidants, they really can't get into your skin very well because of the film forming agents in the sunscreen. Um, but the thing I didn't care for about this was the fact that the ingredient list is super long. I mean, really, really long. Like you have to spend a lot of time going through the ingredient list and it, it'll give you a headache. Beeswax, propolis, royal jelly. These are really popular ingredients. And you know, honey and propolis, they're rich in antioxidants, they have antibacterial properties, they're great humectants. But unfortunately, these things are common causes of allergic contact dermatitis. And, you know, so people can develop an allergy to them is what I'm saying. Propolis or propolis being one of the more common allergens, but also royal jelly as well. So I worry about that, but then it has geranium extract. Now geranium extract geranium flowers, geranium is gonna have geraniol in it. Geraniol is, fra is a fragrance compound, another reason to have allergic contact dermatitis. So that number of ingredients in a sunscreen is just kind of a risky list. Um, but this kind of goes on really goopy and sloppy. It's very shiny. It doesn't burn when you put it on the skin, but it does run into your eyes. And when it runs into your eyes, it's blinding. It doesn't Ding the eyes, but it kind of gives you this haze, especially if you're wearing some, um, contact lenses. It makes the contact lenses hazy. So I didn't care for this. All right, those of you who live in tropical climates uh, like the Philippines, listen up. These are awesome. These are two sunscreens by the brand Omi, the Verdio line, the UV moisture gel, and the UV Moisture Essence. Both of these are fantastic for oily skin, for dry skin because they're not drying, but they're great in humid climate because they are that gel vehicle that goes over really well in humid environments. These are good for the beard area and hair bearing areas as well. They don't leave a, they don't deposit on the, the hair. So these are both chemical sunscreens. They do have titanium dioxide in them. So there is a little bit of a white flash, but the titanium dioxide in this gel, in these gel vehicles, it doesn't get on your hair. Um, but it does kind of leave a little bit of a flash. They're predominantly chemical sunscreens, but they differ in the chemical filters. The Essence just has Octinoxate, Tinosorb, Uvenol A+, and Octoprolin. That's a good lineup. Uvenol A+, is gonna get UVA1 and UVA2. So it's Tinosorb, and Tinosorb will also get you UVB. And then you've got Octinoxate and Octoprolin, two chemical filters for UVB. So that's really wonderful. Whereas the uh, gel has uh, Uvenol T150, Octinoxate, Uvenol A+, and uh, Tinosorbs. The gel has similar chemical filters, but it also has uh, Uvenol T150, which will give you some more UVB. I mean, these are kind of subtle differences. Honestly, wearing them, I didn't appreciate any difference between the two whatsoever. Neither of them pill or ball. They are both uh, water resistant and they, they don't have, while they're gel vehicles, importantly, they don't have any alcohol denaturant in them. So if you find that that's irritating to you or too drying, try these out. They're amazing. I love them and they were, they have been a favorite. I will reorder them. I get these on YesStyle. This is a Japanese brand of sunscreen and I got both of them on YesStyle. Same thing with the Megumi one. I know I'm saying that wrong, sorry. Um, and the Skin Aqua. All right, the La Roche-Posay Anthelos 50 Mineral. This is a mineral only liquid sunscreen. It has a little shaker ball in it. And it has zinc and titanium dioxide. This is really good if you have sensitive skin that's oily. It is a more liquidy lotion vehicle, so it has a matte finish to it. It leaves a little bit of cast on darker skin types, but not as bad as, as many others. I found, and not in any consistent fashion, occasionally from time to time would pill and ball up. Not to the extent as the, not to the same extent as the Urban Skin RX, but it definitely would creep up on 
particularly on my neck. I found that this one would kind of pill towards the end of the day sometimes. Free of added fragrance, water resistant. It's very sensitive skin friendly, very oily skin friendly. It is a little drying. So this is not a great choice if you are looking for a more moisturizing vehicle. It, it dries matte. I prefer their um, mineral lotion. That one is more moisturizing, it doesn't pill and ball, um, but is shinier. So it's kind of a trade off. The CVS Health Clear Zinc Lotion SPF 50, you guys. This is amazing. It doesn't leave much of a cast whatsoever. It's a, it's a fairly light cast. It's zinc oxide and octocrylene, so it's a combination sunscreen. This is a very affordable dupe for L to MD UV Sport. Water resistant up to 80 minutes, I believe. Yes, 80 minutes and very sensitive skin friendly, super moisturizing. Unlike L to MD UV Sport, I found that this is less shiny than L to MD UV Sport. It's still a little shiny. A lot of water resistant sports sunscreens just are. But this one I find when I compare it to UV Sport, L to MD UV Sport, it's less shiny. I loved it, very inexpensive. Try it out, you guys, it's dirt cheap. <laughs> and if you hate it on your face, you can wear it on your body. That being said, on the body, this is a little sticky. Not on the face, it's interesting, but on the body, you know, I don't know, you feel it more, more stuff is touching you, I don't know, than on your face. Especially if you don't wear your hair down, uh, then sometimes you can get away with something a little bit more sticky on the face. So this one's a touch sticky, that's what I'm getting at just a touch. Sticky icky. Ooh wee! I'm Dr. Dre, right? But when I say that, I'm only referring to sunscreen, not the, not what they're referring to. Anyways, uh, next up, I finished an old favorite of mine, the Exuviant Sheer Daily Protector Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 50. Now they have repackaged this and they now call it a BB cream. Go figure, or BB something. Uh, it's the exact same, it just has a different label. Um, it's even still in this kind of rectangle bottle. This is great, it is a liquid vehicle, like a lotion vehicle. So it goes on uh, and is not heavy or greasy. It's very good for people with, uh, with oily skin, but unlike some of the other liquid vehicles, it's not as drying. This is a mineral only sunscreen, but it's definitely more moisturizing than, than the La Roche-Posay on Thelos Mineral SPF 50. This is a nice balance of not being greasy or heavy, but being moisturizing at the same time. And unlike the La Roche-Posay mineral one that I just held up, this has uh, EGCG in it, an antioxidant that, remember, antioxidants and sunscreens, they probably, they really don't get into your skin. But EGCG is one of the more compelling antioxidants for mitigating the damaging effects of UV. And it also has been shown to diminish the appearance of pores. Whenever they put antioxidants in sunscreens too, they like to make a lot of anti-pollution claims. But you know, like I've said, antioxidants in sunscreens, they don't really get into the skin properly because of the film forming agent. But whatever that's in there. Um, however, this, like the, like the clear and the MD Solar Science tinted products, this one's tinted. The tint on this is better suited for fair skin types or kind of medium to fair skin tones as opposed to darker skin types. I think if you're a darker skin type, this is gonna look, you know, chalky, casty on your skin. Go with the clear one, C-L-E-U-R-E or MD Solar Science or Coats, which I don't have here. Um, but anyways, this one is great if you have um, sensitive skin and you're a fair skin type, you want something that's a little matte but still moisturizing and not drying, this is great. It doesn't pill or ball. It is expensive, unfortunately. I repurchased that numerous times. It's very good. One that, I'm surprised I didn't go through more of these this past winter. Um, I kind of took a break from the sunscreen, but I'm wearing it again, actually currently on my face, although the tinted version. This is the Dermatology Broad Spectrum SPF 45 Anti-Aging uh, Sunscreen. I've always, I've loved this. And I, I mean, I go through this consistently. Like I said, I'm wearing the tinted version of this now, but this one uh, goes on and 
it leaves the skin looking kind of glowy. It definitely has a bit of a cast to it. If you have a darker skin type, you're gonna notice it more so than some of these others that I've mentioned. But for me, I actually kind of like that little bit of a cast. I, I don't know, I think that it looks nice on my skin. I've always enjoyed it. Fair warning though, their sunscreens smell weird. They have a weird smell. I've mentioned this in other videos. To me, it smells like you're inflating a pool float. And a lot of you guys concur with that sentiment. But otherwise, if you can get over that smell, this is great. Doesn't pill, doesn't ball. Their tinted one is really good if you have kind of an olive skin tone, olive to medium skin tone. Sometimes on me, it looks a little too dark, but if you are more olive medium, that would be a good one for you to try. It's their universal tint. I'll list it down below for you guys. But uh, yeah, this one has, in addition to the sunscreen actives, which are zinc and octinoxate, this also has niacinamide in it, which can help calm down redness and also can kind of help in um, uh, skin brightening and issues surrounding hyperpigmentation. Love it, doesn't pill, doesn't ball. And I don't wear makeup, but a lot of you guys have bought this who do wear makeup and you find that it goes well with with wearing makeup, it doesn't cause issue for your makeup. Comment below if that's been your experience, affirm or refute. And then lastly, I am currently wearing my Vanny Cream Lip SPF mostly, but I did make my way through the Tizo, T-I-Z, Tizo, Tizo, it's titanium zinc oxide, it's kind of their branding. This is their tinted lip SPF. This does have flavorant added to it, which can, can cause an irritant, chelitis on the lips. So I don't recommend it but it has a nice subtle tint to it. So it gives you some uh, protection against pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. It's titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, but it doesn't leave a white cast. Like the Vanny Cream kind of does leave a little bit of a white cast, but once it blends in, it kind of changes your lip color to almost a pinkish hue. I like the way it looks, but it's not gonna go over universally well. Anyway, what I'm getting at is this does not leave that kind of whitish cast. It's more of a like, subtly almost brownish hue. I think I have a little bit here left behind. Yeah, I'm, I'm hitting the little stick in the center. Oh, standing on my tiptoes and I just did a blog of Lottie's workout and it worked my calves and they're a little sore. <laughs> I really wish they would take the flavorant out of this. It'd be perfect, actually. I mean, I, I really like it otherwise. What can I say? And this, you guys, Tizo. The Tizo lip product is the exact same as the Coats Tinted Lip SPF as well, C-O-T-Z. They're the same and they wear the same. Uh, super moisturizing though. Like I said, I really need for them to take the the flavorant out of it so that it doesn't cause irritant chelitis for people. So yeah, those are the sunscreens that I made my way through, some hits and misses. Hopefully this video is useful to you guys in pointing out some key features. Check the descriptor box, I will list all of these. But comment below what sunscreens you guys are loving currently. I need to know these things so that if I have not used them, I can try them out. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, Sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.